Hi, Mr. Fong here. I'm here to explain to you the exemplar that you got and to look at what we're looking for in an organized raw data table. So let's start from left to right. We have here the drop height, the trials, and some calculations on the right here. So on the left, notice there's the uncertainty of instrument. Uh, it looks like the person here has three decimal places in their measurement device. So probably it looks like a half a centimeter. So they were when they were measuring, they were precise to half a centimeter. So in between markings of a centimeters, perhaps here. And notice it's in meters. The drop height is in meters because we'll be working with acceleration due to gravity, which has a unit of meters per second squared. So it's very important to keep your units the same for calculation purposes. And notice that the values are going from small to big. And the smallest number this person used was 0 0.8 meters, which is not bad. Remember, anything smaller than your uh, reaction time will come into play, um, making your measurements quite imprecise. And we'll see that even for this person, 0 0.8 meters was their, um, th this data point was their least precise data point. Moving over to the time measurements, you can see here again, uncertainty of instrument. And here, most people have a stopwatch that has two decimal places, I believe. And notice that matches all the decimal places for all the values that we've entered, even for 0 0.6 here. We want to say that we're precise to the second decimal place. So instead of writing just 0 0.6, you would write 0 0.60. And that explains all the zeros here as well. We're precise to three decimal places. Next column is the average. This was calculated easily by a spreadsheet. I'll explain why this has one decimal place in a moment. But this corresponds to what I said earlier about this value being probably the least precise, right? So this is an, um, this goes to the uncertainty of the spread then, right? That means this all of these numbers in the first row for 0 0.800 meters are probably not great because here the average is 0 0.5 seconds, only precise to one decimal place. And here I have columns for my maximum minimum calculations. It's not super necessary, but as beginners, it's a good idea to keep it there for you to see. And the uncertainty of data column here, we'll talk about last. Um, Looks like I'm missing a unit for time here, so it should be seconds, right? And the first thing you do after you do the calculation for uncertainty of data is to round the value down to one significant digit. That's the rule of thumb. Notice all of these numbers on the last column only has one significant digit. These zeros are not significant, so only the last digit is significant. And notice all for all but one of them, uh, all the values have two decimal places, which kind of makes sense because our stopwatch was at two decimal places, right? However, this one, once you round it, I think, if, I'm not sure, I think it was like 0 0.18 or 0 0.17, and it rounded to 0 0.2 in order to have two, uh, one significant digit. And, and that means this number is best represented by 0 0.5 plus or minus 0 0.2 and that is a huge uncertainty and we look back at our data here it makes sense right it goes as small as 0 0.35 and as big as 0 0.65 so almost like 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 so therefore 0 0.5 plus 2 is 0 0.7 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.3 so this actually makes sense that for the first data point the average time is 0 0.5 plus or minus 0 0.2 seconds. This is to show the reader that, hey, this data point is not that great. And that's it. This is pretty much what I would be looking for uh, compared to the data table that you submitted and complete the self-assessment form. Again, this is uh, under these circumstances or uh, distance learning, like marks don't really matter. I mean, just do your best and, and learn. Now you're free of those shackles. Any uh, questions, let me know. That's it for now. See you next time.